Welcome back to Wake Up America. I'm Rachel Roller. Let's give you a quick look at today's business headlines. And to help me do that, going to bring in business and market analyst, Newsmax contributor, Seth Denson. Good morning, Seth. Cheer for the case of the Mondays. I'm here, Rachel. Let's get this done. Yeah, that's it. Let's do it. Let's start with the markets. Dow Jones taking a small hop on Friday, adding nearly 74 points to close out its third straight positive week at a record high. All major averages finishing the week higher for three straight weeks of gains, but the NASDAQ and S&P ended the day in red. Futures are up ahead of trading today. Seth, what do you make of it? Yeah, you know, Rachel, listen, we've got earnings season going on. Earnings, by and large, are good. This, this shows a contrast, though, between the rest of the economy and the markets uh, because a lot of Americans are feeling the pinch of inflation. But, th listen, the Dow is up 18% year-to-date, over 30% over the last 12 months, and it's doubled over the last five years. There is a disconnect. Hopefully we get those in a line soon. All right, on, let's the, take on the positive side. On the positive side is the hope, of course. Uh, not so positive, the customer alert for Walmart recalling an aromatherapy spray that could be contaminated with a bacteria being linked to two deaths and four illnesses. This spray was imported from India. It's sold under the Better Homes and Gardens brands. Set this picture of what looked like a little Petri dish all over the Internet this weekend. Everyone kind of scouring their cabinets to see if they had this in their home. Well, you know, I will tell you, Mrs. Denson and myself did, and sure, sure enough, we had some better homes and gardens, oils and things like that, uh, not this specific spray. But this is a tragic deal. Matter of fact, a young girl just north of where I live has is, is, is been infected by this bacteria. Uh, tragic deal. You know, from a flip side, I don't think this is ultimately going to hurt Walmart all that much. Their stock is up over 100% since pre-pandemic levels, and likely this is not going to keep anybody from shopping, but that brand may be tarnished. All right, let's talk social media. Snapchat stocks, not so picture perfect. Snap saying it's experts growth to, it expects its growth to slow to the changes to Apple Incorporated's App Store privacy rules, which actually sent its stock tumbling more than 20%. Is Snapchat the only one going to be affected here? Well, they're not going to be the only one affected, but apparently this direct response marketing uh, structure, which is really what Apple is cracking down on, that's the kind of that immediate response marketing. Snapchat's going to be the most affected by this. Listen, all tech stocks were down uh, at the end of last week, um, but Snapchat obviously feeling the brunt. But you also have to remember, there's a lot of competition in that space, too. Mm -hmm. So people can go elsewhere uh, for their social media fixes, I guess. I didn't know Snapchat was still so popular. All right, let's talk white slip-ons. They're in. They're popular. And some are saying it's thanks to Netflix's hit show Squid Game giving Vans, the parent company, a slight step up on the already popular shoe, once considered only for skateboarders. But this is one that I have to argue with, Seth. I think these were already popular before Squid Game came out. I still haven't watched it yet. It's on my list, but I own multiple pairs. Yeah, I, I don't know Squid Game, and I, I do know Vans. My wife thinks they're really cute. Unfortunately, I have high arches. They don't work for me without my inserts. But nonetheless, I think uh, VF Corp, the parent company of Vans, got a couple of issues they're dealing with. Their stock is actually down 17% year-to-date, and they're going to have some supply chain challenges like everybody else because most of their shoes, or at least the parts for their shoes, well, they're made over in China and Vietnam. So it'll be interesting to see if Squid Game can help them up that stock price a little bit. Another supply chain issue. All right, there may be a coffee war brewing. Oregon-based Dutch Brothers making its public debut back in September, seeing its shares rise nearly 56% since its reveal. But we could probably talk top coffee for too long. So let's switch over to what's happening in Vegas, laying off the flash and glitz over the weekend. Sotheby's auctioning off 11 works from Picasso. Painting selling for more than $100 million. The 1938 painting, Woman in a Reddish Orange Hat, Fetching the highest price, $40.5 million, surpassing that pre-sale estimate. Coincidentally, today would be the 140th birthday for Picasso. $40.5 million, Seth. Yeah, you know, listen, they say art is the beauty in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> Something I don't like get that, it, right? But nonetheless... <laughs> Yeah, nonetheless, here's the deal. I love the story of Paulo Picasso. He's one of the few artists mm -hmm. that actually enjoyed his life, lived 91 years old, was worth half a billion dollars by the time he was dying. I love this story, even though I can't afford any of this stuff. But I will say this. This is a pure Denson. All right. This is my Arabella daughter. Oh, did wow. This. Uh, to me, this is Picasso at its best. So uh, it's priceless to me, but I'm sure I'll make a deal if any of the viewers want to, you know, reach out. It could be an NFT before you know it. Seth Denson, all the time we have for this morning. Thank you so much for joining us for Business Headlines. Thanks, Rachel. All right. Stick with us right here on Wake Up America and get your popcorn ready. We've got the details on something that you may be taking for granted in your kitchen. We'll be right back.